Ito ang balita ngayon, viral at pinag-uusapan ngayon sa mundo ng social media. Ang di umano ay balita, ito ang balita ang dapat malaman ng taong bayan. Balita ang hindi pinalabas ng bayarang media. Patuloy ang pamamayagpag ng Agila. Vice President Sara Duterte, hindi na mapipigilan pa. Sana namang patunay na sa kabila ng samutsaring pangbabatiko sa Office of the Vice President, patuloy pa rin ang tiwala ng mga tagaibang bansa. Sa kakayahan ni Vice President Sara Duterte Kaya sila pa mismo ang nag-court si Cole dito At satellite office ng Vice President Mabilis na umaksyon sa pagbibigay tulong Sa mga nasalanta ng Bagyong Christine At dating Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte Personal na nakiramay sa pamilya ng mga biktima ng Bagyong Christine Pero bago ang lahat kung bago ka pa lamang sa aming channel Please huwag kalimutang mag-like, subscribe Subscribe at iklik ang notification bell para mas maging updated ka pa lalo sa lahat pa ng bagong video na i-upload namin. At eto na nga mga kababayan, batid ng lahat ang tila patindi ng patindi ang di umano'y paninira ng ilang kawani ni House Speaker Martin Romaldez kay Vice President Sara Duterte. Ngunit sa kabila nito ay patuloy pa rin ang tiwala ng mga leader ng ibang bansa sa kakayahan ng Vice President Sara Duterte. Kaya sila pa mismo ang nag-courtesy call dito. Mongolian Deputy Prime Minister His Excellency Sain Buyan Amar Saikan bumisita mismo at suportado ang Office of the Vice President. Ayon pa sa inilabas na balita kamakailan lamang ng Office of the Vice President sa kanyang official Facebook account, courtesy call ni Vice President Sara Duterte at Mongolian Deputy Prime Minister His Excellency Sain Buyan Amar Saikan. Tinanggap ni Vice President Sara Duterte si Mongolian Deputy Prime Minister His Excellency Sain Buyan Amar Saikan sa Office of the Vice President Mandaluyong City. Ang pagbisitang ito ay kasabay ng pagdalo ng Deputy Prime Minister sa Pilipinas upang lumahok sa 2024 Asia-Pacific Ministerial Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction. Kasabay rin ito ang pagdiriwang ng 50th Anniversary of Diplomatic Relations sa pagitan ng Pilipinas at Mongolia. Isang milestone na nagpapakita ng matagal ng pagkakaibigan at bilateral cooperation ng dalawang bansa. Sa kanilang pagpupulong, tinalakay nilang disaster risk reduction at pagkilala sa mga banta na dulot ng climate change at mga natural disaster na maaring makaapekto sa Pilipinas at Mongolia. Binigyang diin nila ang mahalagang papel ng pagiging handa at pakikipagtulungan sa pagtugon sa mga makabuluhang banta sa kaligtasan at kapakanan ng dalawang bansa. Unquote. Dito natin makikita mga kababayan ang tunay na pagmamahal ng Vice President na si Sara Duterte sa mga mamayang Pilipino at ang patuloy pa rin ng pagtulong at serbisyo ng Vice President na si Sara Duterte sa kabila ng hindi pagsuporta sa kanya ng gobyerno Bernong kumakalaban sa kanya at habang tila busy ang ilang mangbabatas sa mga pagdinig na tila pamumulitika lang di umano sa mga Duterte ay busy naman ang satellite office ng pangalawang pangulo sa walang humpay na pagbibigay ng tulong sa mga lugar na nasalanta ng Bagyong Christine. Kasama ng pangkat ng Office of the Vice President, si dating Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte na personal na nakiramay sa mga pamilya ng biktima ng Bagyong yung Christine. Ayon pa sa post ng Office of the Vice President, former President Rodi Duterte on Tuesday, October 29, 2024, personally condoled with the families of Typhoon, Christine P.H. victims who died from a landslide last October 24, 2024 in Barangay, Sampaloc, Talisay, Batangas. Together with him is a team from the Office of the Vice President Special Project Division and Public Assistant Division to provide board assistance for the affected families. He also joined the OVP Disaster Operation Center's Relief Operation and different evacuation centers in Talisay and Laurel, Batangas. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang pamimigay tulong ng Office of the Vice President.
OVP Relief Operation sa Bicol. Tumating na sa Bicol ang relief at boxes food mula sa Office of the Vice President para sa gagawing relief operation sa probinsya para sa mga nasalanta ng Typhoon Christine. Kasalukuyang nang hinahanda ng mga kawani ng OVP Disaster Operation Center ang mga food boxes, assorted canned goods at 200 sacks of rice na ipamimigay sa mahigit 5,000 pamilyang apiktado sa Bicol Region. Relief Operation sa Pangasinan. Nagsagawa ang Office of the Vice President ng Relief Operation sa mga pamilyang apiktado ng Bagyong Christine sa Pangasinan nitong October 25, 2024. Sa pamamagitan ng OBP Pangasinan Satellite Office, umabot sa mahigit 500 na mga pamilya na kasalukuyang nasa anim na evacuation centers mula sa bayan ng Lingayin at Benmali Pangasinan at Dagupan City ang nabigyan ng tulong. Karamihan sa mga beneficiaryo ay na sa low-lying areas at malapit na coastal areas ng probinsya na lubhang naapektuhan ng Typhoon Christine. Relief Operation sa Camarines Sur Umabot sa mahigit 2,000 na pamilyang apiktado ng Typhoon Christine ang nabigyan ng food bags sa Pamplona, Centro at Libanan, Camarines Sur ngayong araw, October 27, 2024. Kasalukuyan ang bumabiyahe ang OVP Disaster Operation Center patungong Joint Task Force Bicolandia para sa final coordination sa mga susunod pang relief operation sa ibang parte ng Bicol Region. Unquote. Kababayan, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Madayaw ug maayong adlaw kaninyong tanan. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. First off, let me thank the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry for your invitation for me to join you on this momentous occasion. 50 years of the PCCI. I am truly happy. This is my third year with PCCI. And I will tell you later kung bakit paboritong paborito ko umaten na PCCI event. But let me first give out my messages of gratitude. First, I'd like to thank all of you for your continued support to the Office of the Vice President, our projects, programs, and activities across the country. Nagang salamat sa inyong padayon nga suporta. My next message of gratitude is from our family, the Duterte family. Nagpapasalamat po kami sa patuloy ninyo na suporta at sa pagkakataon na ibinibigay ninyo sa amin na makapaglingkod sa ating bayan. Maraming salamat po, mga kababayan namin. And of course, let me thank and give special mention to the Davao City Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I cannot discount the tremendous help, support, and assistance that the Davao Chamber gave me during my terms as mayor of Davao City. Kaya po ako, sila po ang nagturo sa akin na napakahalaga ng business sector, ng private sector sa trabaho ng gobyerno. Maraming salamat sa inyo. Kaya naman, noong ako ay naging Vice President, dinala ko yung values na tinuro sa akin ng Davao City Chamber of Commerce. Na mahalaga ang Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry sa trabaho ko bilang Vice President. Because the government do not have the monopoly of brilliant minds. In fact, many geniuses are found 
in the private sector. That is why it is very important that there should be collaboration between the government and the private sector, the business sector. Kaya, paborito ko na umaten talaga dito sa PCCI para din magpasalamat sa inyong lahat sa contribution ninyo sa ating bansa. I would like to congratulate all the awardees. Thank you for your service to our country. And I would like to congratulate the Secretariat and the Execom for the 50 years anniversary program. Congratulations on the success of your celebration. Let me congratulate the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry as you mark your 50th year of unparalleled advocacy for bringing economic security and stability to the nation. Through your leadership, members of the business sector find a common platform of conver convergence where new business trends and opportunities are explored, adopted, and revolutionized. This year, as you embark on ways to address the challenges presented by new and emerging opportunities, I trust that you will successfully forge sustainable strategies that will empower the business community. We cannot deny the very crucial and important role of innovation in this age of digitalization. Digitalization has complemented our human resources in ensuring efficient operations and timely production, and of course, delivery of services and products. We cannot refuse the benefits of digitalization in our businesses. We should consider it a gift to humanity, a gift that we should accept with grateful hearts and be willing to invest in digital infrastructures. While we consider digitalization our friend, we cannot entirely say the same with innovation. Innovation has profoundly transformed the business environment and raised the competitiveness of every industry here and overseas. The industry is always expected to adopt new technologies in producing products, and products are expected to be innovative, to be successful. By innovative, a product or service must offer something unique, something special, added value, if not better or superior to the ones already existing. Embracing new innovation is inevitable, or we will be left behind in the grind, as we are compared to our neighbors and compared to the rest of the world. Where competition between and among humans becomes increasingly cutthroat, but innovations have also become inescapable markers for humans, allowing them to imagine a future dominated by technology. The coming of artificial intelligence, for one, is a cautionary tale for many of us, bringing the world anxiety, if not panic, from doomsayers presenting us a dystopian picture where AIs govern humans. It is both expected and understandable because we are, after all, beings who are almost always scared of things we do not know. Alam nyo, sa mga taon na nagtatrabaho ako sa gobyerno, innovation comes from people. And the challenges to innovation comes from three kinds of people. Una, yung mga 
masisira ang kanilang negosyo. Ayaw nila mag-innovate. Ayaw nila magbago. Kasi bakit masisira yung diskarte, yung negosyo namin dito sa gobyerno? Pangalawa, yung mga taong takot. Ay, hindi namin alam yan. Huwag yan. Mahihirapan tayo niyan. At pangatlo, yung mga tao na ayaw ng pagbabago. Yaan ang tatlong klaseng tao ang nakita ko. Tao ang gagawa ng innovation, pero tao din ang kukontra sa innovation. But AI has also caused excitement and more and more people are drawn to the opportunity it offers. Ultimately, humans should ensure that AI becomes our partner in improving lives and making the world a safer place. We should replace the fear of the unknown with profound optimism by using technological advances such as AIs to achieve greater operational productivity. The government and the private sector can collaborate to create innovation centers and foster an environment that encourages risk-taking and experimentation. With the ingenuity and creativity of Filipinos, I believe we can do more to create better products and systems that will bring profit and move our industries forward. Alam nyo, I believe Filipinos can be the next, I forgot his name, the owner of Tesla. A Filipino can be the next Elon Musk. We are a powerhouse of geniuses. Hindi lang sa ating mga professionals, but yung mga nasa loob ng ating mga colleges and universities. We just need to do that dream that we don't want to be middle income. We want to be a super power. And we can. It's just a matter of putting that vision in every Filipino mind. Let me cite examples of how Filipinos have demonstrated our capacity to excel using modern technology and creating innovative solutions to perennial problems. The Philippine Robotics Team, led by some of our science high school and private schools, has showcased exceptional talent and innovation on the global stage, competing against teams from different countries with more advanced robotics programs. They have secured major awards in prestigious competitions. With government and private sector support, imagine what our Filipino youth can do to create solutions for various challenges from disaster relief to agricultural optimization. Filipinos can create products that disrupt the market by thinking outside the box and embracing new innovative technologies. In business, technological advances have optimized business operations. It continues to enhance the effectiveness of management with real-time data and faster communication. Employees, too, benefit from these innovations by simplifying tasks, automating repetitive work, and facilitating collaboration and transparency between management and employees. Because the technological revolution has also led to job displacement in certain sectors, we should consider the urgency of reskilling and upskilling our workers and equip them with the new skills in a technologically evolving workplace. By investing in workforce development, we can harness the power of technology to create a more effective and productive future while ensuring that employees are equipped to thrive in this new landscape. 
by inspiring more Filipino innovators, especially entrepreneurs and students, to innovate and think outside of the box. We can harness the power of innovation to foster inclusive growth and development, while ensuring that its benefits reach all Filipinos across all segments of society. Alam niyo po, noong ako ay kalihim ng kagawaran ng edukasyon, tinanong ko yung aming BLD, Bureau of Learning Development, bakit nasa pen and paper pa rin tayo sa exams? Bakit nasa paper, hard, hard copies pa rin tayo sa libro? Ilang beses na ako nakakita ng paaralan na nasunog and common yan uh, for mayors and governors to see para paaralan na nasunog classroom na nasira sa earthquake classroom na nabaha classroom na nasira sa bagyo at lahat ng nasa loob noong classroom ay sira din kasama ang mga libro so sabi ko bakit kayo nandyan pa rin sa papel na pwede nyo namang gawing e electronic books, digital books. Yan. And so, we started to create the Department of Education, Digital Education 2028. It envisioned a completely uh, paperless mode. Hindi ko naman sinabi, alisin talaga natin lahat ng papel at ballpen at lapis. But we needed to have another path, another path that is resilient against challenges to basic education. Sabi ko sa kanila, ba, tinanong ko, o oh, ano? Sabi nila, one is to one tayo sa tablet, sa laptop. Sabi ko, alam nyo, yung one is to one na yan, kahapon pa yan, nung nakaraan pa yan, ten years ago. Ang um, one is to one na tablet. Sabi ko, hindi pwede yan. Kasi gagastos ka lang ng gagastos. Ibibenta lang yan, laptop mo, na nakawin lang yung laptop mo, sisira lang yung laptop mo. Sabi ko sa kanila, ilagay mo yan sa cloud. Ilagay mo yan where the student, anywhere and everywhere, can access the materials, the resource materials, the books. Sabi ko, Hindi naman lahat, sabi nila, oh, hindi naman lahat may cellphone eh. Totoo yan, hindi lahat may cellphone. Pero, marami ang may piso net. Sabi ko po, saan man yan sila, makukuha pa rin yan nila pababa, galing sa cloud, doon sa piso net. Sabi nila, e paano yung mga, sabi ko sa inyo, di ba, ang kalaban ng innovation, tao din. E paano yung mga nasa paaralan na walang kuryente? Sabi ko, di ba, ang dami-daming nag-offer sa atin ng mga solar panels. Sabi ko, bakit hindi natin gamitin yon to power the cloud, to power the Starlink. It is a, an uphill battle to present innovation to people. Kaya, pagdating sa innovation, ibenta mo muna yung idea eh. Ganun ang ginawa, di ba? ni uh, ni Apple Steve Jobs Steve Jobs ganun ang ginawa niya diba binenta muna niya ang was it iPad first no o nauna ang iPhone nauna ang iPad I think binenta niya muna ang iPad bago niya sinabihan ng mga tao look pwede yan sa iPhone or is it the other way around basta merong nauna because he had to present it first sa mga tao. Na it can be done. So, you still need to do marketing sa innovation, sa idea, before you sell your innovative product. But uh, we can get there. And we will get there. We just have to move faster than the way we are moving right now as a country. Inclusivity remains an essential signifier of meaningful growth and development.
it is expected that we embrace new and emerging opportunities cognizant of our special contract to be inclusive. Despite the peculiarities of the present and future global business trends. Innovative technologies such as robotics, drones, and artificial intelligence are all created to increase efficiency and enhance the outcome and quality of work across industries. We shall march on the beat of these new global trends through our workers' strength, energy, and hearts. And may I just give a comment about peace and order. Peace and order na yan. Na lagi sinasabi, ay, kulang kasi ang police natin. Kasi with AI, with robotics, with everything di in digital form, we don't need more human, more humans to become policemen. We only need to harness what is available right now to improve our security, to improve our peace and order. So again, I go back. Ang challenge ng innovation ay tao din. We shall march on the beat of these new global trends through our workers' strength, energy, and hearts. And these make humans dependable, reliable, and powerful machines. Mga kababayan, ang lahat ng ating ginagawa ay para sa Diyos, sa bayan, at sa bawat pamilyang Pilipino. Syukran. At yun na nga mga kababayan, ano na ang masasabi mo? Kung mayroon kayong hinaing at komento patungkol sa balitang ito, please comment down below. Pag-uusapan natin yan sa comment section. At kung nagustuhan nyo ang video, ay huwag kalimutang mag-like at i-share na din para mas marami pang makaalam at tumabot ito sa marami sa ating mga kababayan. Maraming salamat po!